Welcome to this demonstration on how to create a multi-site file server cluster using DoubleTake Availability GeoCluster. In this video we're going to take our existing two node single site cluster and extend it by adding a third node at a remote site. The single site two node cluster was created in previous videos. We can see in Failover Cluster Manager we have SQL node 1 and SQL node 2. We need to identify a third node at the remote site. I have installed a third node called SQL node 3 and it is located at a remote site. Just to verify, I'm going to ping SQL node 1 and we can see the subnet is 10.77.1. I'll ping SQL node 2 and verify again the subnet is 10.77.1. If I ping SQL node 3, 10.77.7 is the subnet. It is on a, a remote subnet. Therefore, what we are about to create is a multi-site geocluster file server. To add the third node into the domain, I need to do the, the usual configuration for a cluster node. It needs to be a member of the domain. I need to be able to connect to the third node using TCP IP. Simply right click on nodes and select add node. And let the add node wizard do its thing. When the wizard is complete, the node is part of the cluster. We need to reconfigure the file server cluster IP address, which currently belongs to the 10.77.1 network. Obviously, that is not valid for the remote network. So, first of all, we deselect SQL 3 as a node that could run that IP address. And then we're going to assign a new IP address to the cluster, which belongs in the 10.77.7 network that can be used at the second site. And again, I want to configure the properties of the second IP address so that it does not attempt to be started on SQL node one or SQL node two at the primary site. I'm now ready to test SQL node three so I can do a, a migration. As we can see, the IP address 10.77.7.224 comes online and the file server comes online. I can very quickly check the file server's working by using Windows Explorer. And you can see the files there, the folders that we expect to see there are present. It's a good time to have a look at the replication engine in action. I'm going to open up Windows Explorer folders for the three nodes and my file share. Create a file in the file share and we'll see immediately it will appear on SQL node 3 and then shortly after on SQL node 1 and 2 simultaneously. Create a new file and we can say the same thing it very quickly appears on SQL node 3 because that's the node that's hosting the cluster. And one more time I'll just create a new text file. We'll see it immediately appear on SQL node 3 and very shortly after appear on SQL node 1 and 2. I can change that file and you can see immediately the, the file is also renamed on all three nodes in the cluster. This is one of the advantages of Double Take GeoCluster. We do have multiple copies of the data rather than relying on one central storage array. The next thing I want to look at is creating a active active two site cluster. I'm going to go through the configure service or application wizard, select file server again, specify a name. This time I'm going to use site2fs. I'm uh, going to specify an IP address in both uh, subnets, in the remote subnet and the local subnet. Choose a disk. I've created a GeoCluster replicated disk already that I can use. And then just let the uh, high availability wizard complete. I'm going to very quickly configure the properties of the IP addresses to make sure that they do not uh, attempt to come online on a inappropriate host.
finally, I'm going to move the file server onto the remote cluster node at the second site. And the final thing is to configure the properties of the each file server so that their preferred host resides in the appropriate network. So for file server for site two wants to belong in site two and for file server for site one needs to belong in site one. Just to wrap up this video, I'm going to simulate a failure of one of the uh, sites in the cluster. First of all, I'm just going to connect to the file server at the secondary site and just create a simple text file on the file share. Pretty much immediately, I'm going to bring up the Hyper-V console for the virtual machine that is located at the remote site and I'm going to just simply power off the server. We can see the file server is now turned off, so return to the failover cluster manager and observe the failover take place. We can see within seconds the file server has been brought back online. It now is using the IP address located at site number one and I can immediately connect to the file share and I should be able to see the file that I created a moment ago. I can create a new file just to say I'm in DR. That concludes the demonstration of the two site geocluster. In the next video presentation I will complete a multi-site cluster with three sites and SQL databases in the mix. Please visit us at www.bcap.com.au